Welcome to Card Rogue Videos. I'm Ryan Saunders, the creator of Card Rogue. This video is an introductory tutorial of the game. To learn the in-depth rules, please read the rulebook at cardrogue.com. Card Rogue is a one to four player game that takes about an hour to an hour and a half to play. The game is challenging and requires a balance of luck and strategy. For this tutorial, we will play a quick two player game. Setup requires shuffling of the exploration cards and pathing tile stack. The game begins by rolling to see who goes first. The first player picks a player token and one of the four character cards, the warrior, the rogue, the cleric, or the explorer. The second player picks one of the remaining tokens and character cards. Each player also receives a reference card, score sheet, equipment card, and a starting tile. Players should note their max health on the score sheet. All characters have 10 max health, except the warrior, who has 12. To set up the game, the first player places his starting tile in front of him and places his player token on that tile. He then adds at least four face-down exploration cards between his starting tile and the starting tile of the other players. Additional exploration cards are placed around the starting tile excluding the position closest to the edge of the table. The first player starts the game by following the standard turn sequence. Step 1. Apply turn-based effects. The player has no such effects in the beginning of the game. Step 2. The player may flip over an adjacent exploration card. This is a pathing tile. Notice it has two paths on the bottom and top of the card. The left and right of the tile are walls. Step 3. The player may move to an adjacent pathing tile. Step 4. The player may interact with the card he moved on to. However, since this is a pathing tile, there is nothing to interact with. Step 5. The player may interact with a player on an adjacent tile. An adjacent tile is a tile directly left, right, up, or down of the tile the player is currently on. If there is a wall between two tiles, the two tiles are not adjacent. Step 6. Place face-down exploration cards on any edge of the tile the player is currently on that is not a wall and hasn't already been explored. It is now the second player's turn. She begins by flipping over an exploration card. If the pathing tile has an arrow, rotate the tile so that the arrow points away from the player's current tile. A player may flip over multiple exploration cards in a single turn, as long as the player doesn't move or enter combat. However, a player may only move once per turn. She then places exploration cards where needed. The players continue flipping over the exploration cards and moving forward. However, safe paths aren't the only mysteries of Card Rogue. On the first player's next turn, he discovers the first threat. This is an enemy card. It has an attack amount and a max health amount. When a player reveals an enemy, he leaves the standard turn sequence and enters the combat turn sequence. Step 1. The player rolls for an attack roll. The number indicated on the die is the amount of damage the player inflicts on the enemy. The player should keep track of the enemy's current health on the score sheet. Step 2. If the enemy has a special ability, apply the ability or roll to see if it succeeds. This enemy has no such ability. Step 3. The enemy deals an indicated amount of attack damage to the player. This enemy deals 2 damage, and the player should record his current health on the score sheet. Until the player leaves combat, he cannot resume his standard turn sequence. Player 2 decides to do nothing during this turn. Players do not need to flip cards or move for a turn. Player 1 resumes the combat turn sequence. Instead of rolling an attack roll for step one, the player may indicate that he is rolling to flee. If he rolls a one, two, or three, the player failed to flee, and the combat turn sequence skips to step two. However, if he rolls a four, five, or six, he flees by moving away from the enemy to an adjacent tile. The player then leaves combat and resumes his standard turn sequence where he left off. If the player moves adjacent to a revealed enemy, he again enters into combat with that enemy. This player, however, decides to flee away 
and continuing with his standard turn sequence, he moves to the starting tile. It is the second player's turn. She also reveals an enemy and enters combat. When an enemy's health is reduced to zero, it is slain and the player takes the enemy card into her hand as loot. This enemy is worth one gold. The player then replaces the enemy card with a pathing tile from the pathing tile stack. This is a trap. When a player reveals or steps on a trap, it is triggered. This trap poisons the player for two turns. Each turn, the player will lose one health. The player moves onto the trap and triggers it again. However, poison does not stack and she is still poisoned for two turns. To indicate that she is poisoned, the player may use the poison effect card and situate it to show that she is poisoned for two turns. It is the first player's turn. He flips over an exploration card and reveals a potion. He flips over another card to reveal another potion. The player then moves onto one of the potion cards to pick up the item and replaces it with a pathing tile. Potions have unknown effects when drank or thrown. Potions of different colors have different effects. A player may drink or throw a potion at any time during his turn. A player indicates if he is drinking or throwing a potion and rolls the die to determine the potion's effect. These effects can be found on the reference sheet. This potion is a healing potion and completely restores the player's health. Once a potion is used, it is discarded. The second player begins by applying the poison effect and reducing its turn counter by one. She continues her turn and reveals an artifact. When an artifact is revealed, it is placed in the player's hand. She then replaces it with a pathing tile and moves forward. The first player reveals a sewer rat and attacks it. The sewer rat has a special ability, so the player rolls for that special ability during step two of combat. It fails, but the sewer rat still attacks the player. The second player applies the poison effect again and also enters into combat with the sewer rat because she moves adjacent to it. If multiple players are in combat with the same enemy, the enemy only attacks the first player to enter in combat with it. The player attacks. Her attack roll has a plus two modifier from the artifact, so her roll deals an additional two damage. She slays the enemy and takes its card. She then replaces the sewer rat with a pathing tile. Next, she flips over an adjacent exploration card. This potion is green, just like the healing potion was. Therefore, this potion is also a healing potion. She moves onto the potion and replaces it with a pathing tile. It's a shop. At the shop, the players may sell items and enemies' loot to buy weapons, armor, and scrolls. She sells her enemies' loot for three gold. She should continue to slay enemies to gain enough loot to purchase some items. She ends her turn. The first player would like to move onto the shop, but two players cannot share the same tile. However, players have many ways to interact with each other, including trading, stealing, and tripping. The game continues as the players try to increase in power. The goal of the game is to gain victory points. Victory points are awarded by completing challenging goals. The main goal is to slay the big boss, the golem. For the sake of time, we will skip to this battle. The players have earlier revealed the golem and have decided to work together to slay it. Before entering combat, one player equips a sword that he purchased from the shop by placing the card on the appropriate slot on the equipment card. The players are ready for battle, and they each move into combat on their turns. The golem deals a massive amount of damage and kills the player attacking him. When a player dies, he keeps one of his cards and places one other card face down on the tile he died on. He then moves his player token to any starting tile and ends his turn. Death is common in Card Rogue, and players should be ready to sacrifice hard-earned items. When the golem is slain, the player takes the golem's card and is given two victory points. After the golem is slain, the game enters the end rush. The first player back to the starting tile ends the game and is given one victory point. Once the game is over, the players tally their victory points and the one with the highest score wins.
There are many other types of cards, mysteries, and rules in Card Rogue. Players should read the rulebook to properly play the game. Thanks for watching and happy adventuring.